Good morning guys, welcome back. Last episode we uh, we moved a lot of logs down to our location where we're going to build our sugar shack. And that's plan for today is to get this thing started. And, and the biggest, one of the biggest hurdles on, on doing any kind of project is getting started. Because you don't really know, well in my case, we don't really know what we're doing. Because this is, this is a first for me. I've never built a log structure. I've always used dimensional lumber or made dimensional lumber out of logs and then built from there. So this one is, is different because we're using old pine logs that we harvested from the, the forest above, which were all dead standing. So no live trees have been killed to do this particular project. This is all sort of maintenance that you have to do with a forest that if you own, you need to thin out. So as you can see, we have, we have all our material stacked up. We have our site cleared out. All we have to do now is assemble. Now, I did put a, a question to the comments and, and, and I asked, there was a couple of methods on, on building this particular log cabin. And one's like the full scribe method and the other one is a button pass method, which is much, much quicker. And uh, I had one vote, one vote, one gentleman, I think it was a gentleman, mentioned button pass. Why waste your time doing scribing, blah, 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 blah. And I went, that's a good point. This is a shack, by the way. It's a sugar shack, which uh, for those in the deep south that don't know what a sugar shack, it is not an opium den. It is not for heroin. It is for maple syrup. We are going to be make, making maple syrup in this cabin or this sugar shack in the forest. This is uh, the time honored Canadian tradition in the springtime. We get out of our igloos and we uh, start boiling maple sap to make pancakes. Don's sitting over there freezing while I talk into the camera. Okay, so we're gonna lay some logs out. We're gonna see what our footprint is, and then we're gonna we're gonna do some uh, leveling to see see what we're starting with. Anyways, after careful consideration, I determined that it was probably a bad idea to have just pine logs sitting directly on the soil. So we ended up uh, going to pick up some of the offcuts of the uh, cedar trees that we had up on the, the upper level and those we made piers on all four corners. Kind of get it up out of the dirt. Cedar tends to be a little bit more resilient to the moisture. Should last forever. And bonus is that if you ever need to level this thing, true it up once the ground thaws out and then maybe maybe it sinks a little bit in one corner or the other you can actually just take the, the corner and move up or down or whatever so it's not uh it's not just kind of flopping around so it's got the four corners we're going to put another another pier in the middle because that's where our door is going to be on this guy but uh this is kind of our shape you kind of see it's shaping up our little sugar shack one more pier and then we start stacking logs What do you think? 14-ish? 14 and a half-ish? Good enough. Roll it all the way around. The thing about doing a button pass building like this is that you have to pin your logs together. So I raided my tickle trunk and I grabbed all my scrap flat stock that I got a round stock and got some nails and some that my threaded bar lag bolts that I had and I just kind of sharpened an end on them so they're like a giant nail or a looks like a stake that you kill a vampire with. Anyways, that's uh, that's what I'm going to use to pin the the, uh, the logs together. And if you've ever priced this kind of stuff out, it's it's crazy the price. I like I gotta go visit a scrapyard or something like that and just get some. I think this these guy this guy was from the uh, sauna the sauna stove. It it had like lag bolts holding the thing together. Or was it a heat exchanger? Stuff you save and you're like, what can I use that for? This is the perfect opportunity to jam every extra piece of steel you have into a building. Don's ready to pound that bad boy in. So we even put a sharp on a, on the rebar. We had a chunk of rebar left over, so. Don's gonna nail it. Take that! 
That's secure. Look how look how well that 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 went in. All right, repeat. We're just gonna repeat that another hundred times. Okay, we want to go up on that side and down on this one, don't we? Yeah. Ready? Nobody knows what I'm gonna say ever. That's why it's, it's so good. So I, I did a road trip and I'm just checking on our evaporator pan. I'm here with Dennis. We haven't met Dennis. Dennis was, did a little bit of work for me before and we didn't release that footage yet. Maybe we will in the future. We just haven't. Is that the boiler? Yeah, shh, don't we? <laughs> we won't say anything about the boiler. This is the evaporator. This, We're not... is, this is the evaporator tank. So what are, you, what are you building here today? So you gave me a dimensions. Yep. I'm just creating your design. Oh, this is your this idea. Is my vision. Your vision. Okay. So we just have these little side ribs here just for support. Okay. Right? We're going to so, fill, fill it up with sap. So it's basically a, just a giant stainless steel pan. Basically, that's all it is. This thing's boring to build for you, is it? Um, it's not well, like a rocket lander. Or... No, no, no. No, I've, I've done a lot of other things that are a little bit more intricate. So yeah, we're, we're just, ba I'm basically checking on because I, I, I needed to come to the city anyway, so. Well, yeah. next weekend, it's supposed to be getting up in the temperatures. Well, next Sap's going to run. During the week. Sap's running. No rush, no rush. <laughs> just a small. Just, a this, we got two sides to put on. Look, he's got. Okay, I've, yeah, I'm gonna, gonna put these pieces in here. Yeah. Right, obviously, right? You have to have a little bit of envision, right? Yeah. So I gotta notch everything out. Oh, okay. I think it looks, I think it looks great already. It's almost, it can almost hold water. It just got a big hole here. Just talk about holes, right? We gotta put a drain in there so you can fill up your jug. Oh, that's right. He's got a little bit more welling to do. It's so cool in here. I just, I like going through the scrap pile. I might go through the scrap pile. All right. You well, know, one man's scrap is another man's treasure. That's, that's all I, that's, yeah. You haven't seen the, the evaporator in person, but it, it's, it's something. Oh yeah? So you just gotta put a 45 on this thing. I have to put a 45 on, on here. On this and that thing. 45 on here. And then when I weld it up, yeah. seal it so that it's leak tight, obviously. So you're gonna water test this thing? Wow. I'll put a LPI out so it's a liquid penetrant inspection. Okay. Liquid right. penetrant inspection. That, That's right. that sounds technical. <laughs> what is that? Like no bubbles, no troubles sort of thing? No bubbles, no troubles. Okay. You know, even though air bubbles are free. There's lots of things you can build yourself, but if you want really, really good things, chances are. But I mean, difference between a Ferrari and a Pinto. This is the Ferrari of evaporator pans. <laughs> That's what I was talking in, in my other video. I was talking about is this is the Cadillac of, of log splitters. And this, I don't know if Cadillac's even a good car anymore. So Ferrari's a good car. This is a Ferrari of evaporator pants. It's metal art. It is metal art. I, I, I do a lot of wood art. This is, this is whole nother level sort you know, of stuff. The difference between wood art and metal art, I can add something if I make a mistake. You I can, can add, add wood. It. Can you add wood? You can add wood. You can wood fill. Not as well. Though. You just add some sheetrock, 45 or some <laughs> something. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't fuse to the metal at a molecular base or something like that. <laughs> Right? I like, I like the terminology. Is that is that even close? Yeah, sure. Okay, cool. Yeah, Close-ish. Uh, close good enough. enough. All right, good enough. Horseshoes, hand grenades, <laughs> and welding terminology. Yes. This thing's so cool. I can, I should let him do his thing because I'm just I'm just hindering the progress. We're gonna have spoiling sap if we don't uh, we don't get this show on the road. So if somebody wants one of these things, what do they have to do? Okay, so they can contact you. We're gonna put a link in the description. You're, it's gonna be your, your email address of some sort. He hasn't quite yeah. sorted out. So if you it's guys- It's still a secret. You can have a custom built evaporator pan. So if you build yourself an evaporator at home and you want a pan made because you don't necessarily know how big your thing is, once it's all built, you just call up Dennis and you say, or email him and you say, all right, I got this thing, it's this dimension. This is the Avro Aero. There you go. The Avro Aero of evaporator pans. Yeah, Uncle Justin's gonna come along and say no. Oh, well, we won't talk about him. Okay, <laughs> All right, guys, we're at the start of day two. That's exciting. We uh, had pretty good progress the other day. It was terribly windy and terribly cold. Today it is uh, not windy and warm. It's a great start of the day. I find anytime you're doing a project, if you can sleep on it one night after you've started, the next day goes a lot better because your brain has the time to kind of build it in your sleep. 
if only you woke up and had all that work already done. So we've got uh, it, like three logs high on the one side. We're progressing, not terribly. We gotta start doing the door area. We got our saws all sharpened up. We got some more bar. We got our log pile sitting here. Dawn's ready to go. Let's get, let's get stacking. The, the, the maple syrup might actually start flowing today. We'll check a look. We'll take a look later on today to see how much uh, we've accumulated. It's supposed to go above zero for a period of time and it's sunny out. So that's the, that's the big thing when it goes above zero and it's sunny out, the uh, maple sap seems to flow a lot better. So we'll check that out uh, later on today. Meanwhile, let's, uh, let's get some log stack. Like it owes you rent money or something. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Don? Is it tall enough yet? Uh. <laughs> it's tall enough to actually stretch your back out. Ah, oh. You know what? Just let's dig a hole. Let's just go down. Let's go. Down. Let's go down and put the roof over top of us. Yeah. You must sit in this cabin. No standing. The pioneers must have been just massive people. To be able to build this stuff. Oh, they died when they were like 35, though, right? Yeah, it's true. They did die when they were 35. It's because they pounded in giant rods into the ground or into the wood. Well, they'd be wooden pegs. Wooden they? pegs. Yeah, they would have been fashioned in the wooden pegs out of a, like an old hand pump lathe. They were just, why wouldn't they use branches? Mm. Eh, who knows? I don't know. Actually, we probably research that. No time for that. It's coming along. Progress. Get the old handsaw out. So as we're going along, we've discovered that the log that butts should be skinnier than the one that passes. Because otherwise what happens is the corners end up having a little bit of a space here. And, and, and although I don't think it's going to affect it structurally, it just doesn't look right. So I think the, the butt log should be skinnier than the pass log. We can, uh, we've got a retro, a retro, retro fudgery to, uh, to fix that. We'll just probably shim it just to give that corner a little bit more space. And uh, our pins tend to uh, try to do the, the funky chicken. Um, Don sort of has a solution to drive them in diagonal. Maybe we should cut them a little shorter or maybe put a point on them. There's lots of things we could do. Here we go. When you're about to finish, the short strokes is where it's at. It's the important ones. The important. Uh, all right. Oh, the other side. There's wind it after those short strokes. So we're moving right along. My objective on when I when I do this whole process is, uh, is when I'm using the saw, um, what I'm doing is I'm knocking off really the high spots on the log in order to actually let them sit a little bit more flush. There is a method of the full scribe, which is you, know, you would scribe each log and then make it fit really, really tight and precise. You can do that. That takes a long time. This is more of a fast build. The button pass method is, is proven to be a very fast way to build. As you can see, we're kind of, I'm kneeling down right now, so it's not quite above my head. 
but we've got about four or five feet worth of wall in, in less than two days. So that's, that's a lot of wall. So when I use my saw, I knock off the high points to minimize the gaps between the logs. And, and the gaps aren't that big of a deal because what you do afterwards is you go around and you, you chink, you chink with either, you know, straw and some clay, or you can use parging and some wire mesh. There's lots of different ways of filling these cracks. So these cracks aren't really a problem. They're just kind of nature of the beast. Even if you did a full scrub, you'd probably, well, if you're really good at doing a full scrub, you probably won't have to put anything, but uh, you can put rock soil insulation or any kind of insulation in between the logs and then stuff the outside either with mortar or clay. So that's our, that's our process. We're just kind of moving right along. I think, uh, I think it looks great. Got Don. Don's ready to pound some nails in. We got, they're not even nails, they're, they're, they're basically a rod, three eighths of an inch thick. Got lots of them. Big nails are expensive, so we've got some scrap we're gonna use there, and uh, they seem to be working well. They just go a little wonky, but you can just bend them, just kind of straighten them out as you go, and uh, they go in, they seem to be holding really well. And once it's all together, it'll be solid. <laughs> So Don, what do you think of that? Oh, he's going back in again. He's going back to work. It's not, no, it looks good. I, I think it looks good. What do you think? Is it, we built a great little bonfire here. It looks massive when you're standing in yeah. there. Uh, I guess it's pretty, it's pretty good. This is, uh, we're end of day two, which as you can see, if you were like, you know, in a hurry to build something, this is the way to do it. This button pass method of building log cabin is the way to go if you want to build fast. Like there is some chinking to do, which is the filling of the cracks in the middle. And we probably got to go, how many more, how many more rungs do you think we got to, how many more rows? Probably two more logs we got to put on top of here. We got to make a continuous uh, log across the front in order to kind of hold our walls together. Chris is here, you know who Chris is? You do six foot? Well, with cathedral ceilings and some, we're going to do some pot lights. Six foot on the edges. Yeah, at least six feet on the edges and then they go cathedral to the top and it's like a nine foot roof. I think, uh, and you know what? The maple syrup will just, it, it'll love it in here while it's boiling. We gotta cut windows out too. Cut windows? Skylights. How about we we'll see if we can get some skylights? Oh, some some like translucent panels and just like go no, no windows. So you can focus on boiling syrup while you're in here and not think about anything else. Look at the steam. It kind of like, it's at this stage of the game where you're kind of like, I'm too tired to operate a chainsaw. And, and that's the kind of time where you say, okay, let's just hang that thing up and start again the next day. How does Bean always show up at the end of the day? There she is. Come on. You can hear her. Well, the weatherman was right. He predicted the weather perfectly. It is above zero today. It is going up to seven degrees Celsius, which is seven degrees above the freezing point for those not in Celsius. We've got our boiler moved down to the location, even though our, our log cabin is not quite ready. We're gonna be boiling, because you know what? This stuff goes bad. I don't know if you guys know about maple sap. So if it uh, stays above zero for any length of time, what happens is the sap actually turns milky uh, and then it's, it's bad. So it's gotta be crystal clear, just like water when you, uh, when you boil it. We've got it already. I just got a call from our, uh, our buddy Dennis. He's uh, doing the pan and uh, it's ready to be picked up. So uh, Don and I are gonna go for, uh, we're gonna go for an adventure and probably pick up lunch on the way because it is in town. We're kind of tired. We're kind of tired from yesterday's, you know, giant game of pickup sticks we played. A relaxing day of just collecting sap would be nice. Maybe we'll throw a couple logs on. As you can see, our progress is, is there and yeah. Don, how are you feeling today? Pretty good, not so good the earlier, but uh, not bad now. I get, uh, get, get, the, get everything moving. That's the, that's the big thing. 
All right, let's uh, let's head on over to let's go to the town. Let's go to the city and pick up our pan. We're all done? That's it. That's all there is to it. That didn't feel a thing. <laughs> we'll clean that up. Make it a little, make it, get rid of all the oxidation on it. Is it in? It's in. It's in. Toronto Maple Leaf and the Canada sweater going on. You're, you got you, oh. Toronto Maple Leafs on, mean, your, on your helmet. I did, yes. And yeah. you know, it is because, well, it's maple syrup. Uh, that's right. You gotta have you, a maple leaf. For so maple we've syrup. got a theme going on, the maple syrup theme. It's Canada. It's Canada with the maple syrup. I, I did tell them that if they don't know what the maple syrup, maple leaf looks like, just look at the Canadian flag and it's, it's right on there. That's so. true. Always teaching. So, so Dennis, do you have any words of advice for our, our, uh, our boil? The boil? Our, our upcoming boil? Uh, well, the upcoming boil, my only words of advice is I'm ready, really ready for some maple syrup. That's right. He's he's already starting to cook the pancakes. He's stockpiling pancakes. My wife said that for me to do this for you, <laughs> it's okay as long as she gets some maple syrup. All right. So we got we got. You know what? We might not at the end of this maple syrup boil. We might not have any maple syrup left to eat ourselves. We better. That's okay. We better get it flowing. Well, there's lots of trees. That's right. We start tapping trees. I I noticed in your neighborhood you got trees. We tap those. Pine, no. Those pine well, trees. I've got lots of. Big trees around here. You do, you do have, why don't you make yourself one? I could, well, why do I have to make myself one? I could just collect the sap and bring it over to your place. That's actually, it's probably easier to do that that way. Right. Yeah, yeah it's, it's the I mean, wood. You got to use the wood to, to boil off to get the authentic maple syrup taste. So, so there's a question. The wood, does the smoke from the wood actually go into the syrup? The this last was a question I had. The, the last couple of years, the way we did it where it was kind of, kind of hacky, like we had, uh, we had an old oven and what would happen was the smoke would come up off the fire box and itself and kind of wrap around and kind of, it did impart a little bit of flavor. So we we're not sure if this one's going to, it might be too good and you might not get the smoke in your face and then your maple syrup. So we're going to have to try it. It'll, you'll have to, you'll have to tell us. See, like I know how to make metal things. Yeah. I don't know how to make syrup. I know well, it's like 40 to one ratio. Yeah. It's like 40 gallons of sap. Yep to make one gallon of, gallon of syrup. That's true. That Something is... like that or is it 50 to one? No, well, it depends what, so a maple, a sugar maple is 40 to one. If you can go like, you can go lesser maples, like a Norway maple, and you can probably be 50 to one. It changes, it changes your, uh, I guess your, your, your the ratio. The color, right? Yeah. The color, the darker it is, the you can, more You can do birch. Used. You can do birch trees. Yeah. Birch trees you can do and. Um, anything that has sap. Well, yeah, anything that has like leaves on it. Like you, you wouldn't want to do a pine tree, but yeah, it's just different flavors. But yeah, birch birch syrup is a thing, and it's very light colored. the The color on the maple syrup tends to be more of an amber color, and that's kind of like as it. As it so you condensed. don't really need a sugar maple tree, just as long as it's a maple tree. As long as it's a tree that has leaves on it, you could do oh. elm. I'm sure you could do beech. It's all different. It, it, it's the amount of sugar they they tend to do is maple trees because of the amount of sugar that's in the sap. That's all, it's just different ratios. Sugar content. That's right. It's like, hey, you could make, you could make some maple. Maple whiskey? Exactly. All right, well, you know what? We should make a still. How about a still in the future, boys and girls? Can you make a still? I'm a metal guy. All right, we got our metal guy. He, he's, he's, you he's, just give me the design and I'll build it up. All right, you. so that, like we said, Dennis is making these um, for anybody that wants one, we're going to put a link in the description down below. Uh, and then you can contact Dennis if you'd like a, a pan for maple syrup evaporation or, um, you were building the still. So you never know those plans. Those plans will be on file. Sure. You look Dennis up. I just hot, hot french fry. And John brought a sandwich. Joking on a french fry. <laughs> it's still lava. Mmm. It's not McDonald's today, it's A&W. See, I like to, uh, diversify my food. Any words of wisdom today, Don? None at all. It's like we're cooking in here. It's hot. It's like, it's like an, it's almost shorts and t-shirt weather today, isn't it? We'll see you guys back when we, uh, when we wash that thing out. We gotta wash it because we gotta, uh, we gotta check for leaks because that's important and, uh, 
start collecting maybe. The trees are doing the work right now. They're they're dripping. So we're just letting that drip, 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 drip and fill up our buckets and then we're gonna collect some uh, maple sap. Ole. We're getting there. Whenever you get something new, it's a good idea to scrub it out. Make sure it's washed and free of all contaminants, especially during the manufacturing processes, all the fluxes and dirt and, you know, shops and stuff like that. So we took it, we cleaned it out like hot soapy water, basically rinsed it out after that. And then uh, we filled it up with water to do somewhat of a leak test. So we're pretty, we're pretty much there. We just got a couple more tweaks we've got to do in order to get this thing fully functional. We seem to be holding water quite well. We just got to drain it and bring it on down to the cabins. Chris just showed up. Uh, we're gonna go grab his sled, which is the most convenient tool in the world to uh, load the evaporator pan on. He's gonna help me bring it down because uh, yeah, we need it down here to boil. So I'm gonna go meet him up up top, load her up and uh, bring the pan down. All right, so this is the first Basically test fit. We haven't uh, we haven't married these two up together yet. This is the first test fit. It looks like everything really works out well. Everything's kind of lined up. It uh, it seems to work out beautifully. I guess I can as long as I measure three times and cut at least once. It uh, it seems to fit. I didn't really talk about the uh, this little nipple here, which is the uh, the welded threaded piece on, and I had to uh, we had to get that little a little a little tickle done on that. I didn't really talk about much of it because I don't really know what's going on. It's TIG welding, it's it's magical stuff. There's no like, it's nice and quiet and then there's no real smoke that comes off of it. It's really, it's magic work. So Dennis welded that uh, that guy up just to make sure it was not leaking, it's watertight. We've got our valve all set. So we, cause once this thing's full of maple syrup, there's no way we're gonna be able to lift it off. So that's why the drain is there. So we can, we can just drain it off. Hot boiling maple syrup when it's all done. So we're gonna start collecting some sap and uh, we're gonna give this thing its first inaugural test fire today. You guys can see how this, how this bad boy works. Let's boil some water. Look at the dripping. Look at that. She's running hard. So we're not doing too bad at collecting our maple syrup. The snow is really deep. The, uh, the, 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 uh, trees on the top of the hill where it gets the most sun in the foliage it seems to have the most maple syrup in it we're just kind of deep in the bush these ones don't tend to get they don't they don't start flowing as quickly because they're kind of more of a shaded so the sun has to get to the top so it's not a bad haul so far we'll probably get enough to actually start a boil today because we don't want to have too little it's kind of it's a lot of time you got to take to boil it off so we're just checking the rest of our box our buckets I'm gonna collect it and then drag it down to the evaporator. These trees that are deep in the forest tend to not have that much syrup early in the season. As you can see, there's there's not very much in there. Uh, so yeah, we'll collect it anyways. But like I said, the, the ones deep in the forest tend to not get enough sunshine, not enough heat. Uh, they don't flow as quickly early on in the season. But every little bit counts. Mmm, pancakes. Look how fast this is flowing. We got drip, 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 drip. It's, uh, this, this particular bucket's got about three inches in it. It fills all the way up to the top, and then we take that and we have to boil it down 40 to one. That gives us about that much syrup, but every little bit counts. Last year, our haul was about 50 liters. Uh, that's kind of more than we can uh, personally consume. I got wasted it. I'm wasted it, I put it back on. So uh, yeah, once we're done boiling it off, we'll see how much we got and uh, any excess we can kind of share with our friends and family. So there you go. Maple syrup season's well on its way. On to the next tree. It's 
some people say that you can actually freeze maple sap and then anything that freezes you can actually pick out and what you're left with is a more concentrated maple water and it takes the evaporation process and it quickens it. We've had these things fill all the way to the top with ice and completely frozen solid. Now you can't tell me that there was no sugar in that. I don't believe that. So we've we've boiled the ice completely and we've gotten maple syrup. So I don't I don't believe in uh, in taking the ice off. I just boil the whole thing. I guess the was it the First Nations people used to they there was rumored to boil this stuff off in a hollowed log and they would take the hollow log and they would dump it in and then they would heat up rocks and they'd put rocks inside the hollow log. Now I don't believe that true because you're going to be left with sand or grit or something. I don't think it's going to be very tasty unless you like eating sand and grit. Um, I don't think that's true. So on to the next tree, but first it's important to put the lid back on in case it rains because you don't want to be boiling off rainwater. Grand total so far on collection is about 40 gallons of sap. Now, if we boil that down, which is a 40 to 1, we'll be left with one gallon of maple syrup. So we've got it all in the pan. We don't want to fill the pan up too much because we want kind of like a rolling boil. We want it to boil off quickly. And if there's too much sap in the pan, it won't boil as quick. So we, what we do is we, we light the fire, we get her up to a boil, and then we slowly add the sap. Just keep doing that until you're you know, you probably, maybe over a couple of days, because you, you can let it cool down and then you can refire the boil and you just keep adding and adding and adding and adding until you're left with delicious maple syrup. So let's get this show on the road. Let's start the fire and see how well this thing works. This is the first time we've lit this thing up. We're gonna see how it uh, burns. I have no idea what to expect. It seems to, uh, we're gonna find out. Got my torch. Should be going. There is smoke. There's smoke coming out the chimney. That's a good sign. <laughs> the, uh, whenever you're starting a fire with a bunch of water on top of it, you're gonna have condensation dripping from above. So the initial portion of this, uh, the initial portion of this light isn't going to be pretty, but we'll close the door, see if the draft works. So you can see, this is our draft. It's going to suck air up through there, and once the fire's going, it'll not, so much smoke will come up. Once you get complete combustion, you won't have so much smoke coming out the crack. Check that out. We got uh, our, first, our first signs of progress, our condensation on the outside of the box. Let's take a look inside. Oh, oh yeah, look at that fire going. We've got uh, not quite complete. We got water raining down from the ceiling because we got the differentials too too much. Once we get that up to boiling, it uh, that dripping will go away, and we'll have better combustion. And our our uh, the ash clean out that doubles as the damper seems to be drawn in. That's drawn in quite a bit of air. You can see we've got uh, our smoke is clearing up. We're getting hotter fire. I think it's working well. I guess time will tell. Maybe in the future, maybe what I have to do is put a rope gasket, maybe a thick 5 8 rope gasket all the way around to give it more of a seal so you get more of the heat actually in, in the pan. But it uh, doesn't seem to be losing that much. Uh, the smoke's not coming out the side. What do you think, Chris? Is this better? Is this better than every other year? Probably. I don't think it could be worse. <laughs> don't think it can be worse. Well, it could, if it falls over, it would be worse. Well, we got little feet on it to, uh, to kind of stabilize it. I think it looks good. It's got a big pan. Big pan, that's a, that's a huge pan. It doesn't look like we collected anything. That's what we want, right? We want the, the large surface area. Like that's that's like 20 gallons. That's 20 gallons of sap in there and it looks like it's an inch. I'm sure there's somebody could do the math. The thing's five feet by five feet by two feet by about a foot tall. We're never gonna fill it right to the top. I think this is our this is our, our level if we don't wanna get up that high. Yeah, two inches. I was gonna put the other one in, but too much? Too much. Too much. I think 
Well, may, probably when we spread it out, it's only going to be like a half an probably, inch. Probably put it in there. Wow. Well, put it in there, and then we can, you can fill up the sled again. Yeah, we're going to take another run. So the, uh, the temperature tonight is going up to 12 degrees Celsius, which it's kind of in the spoiling of the maple sap temperature. If milk goes bad, maple syrup sap goes bad as well. So we want to be able to boil this stuff off or even at least get it, you kind of pasteurize it, right? So as long as you bring it up to a boil, you can shut it down. It kind of kills all the bacteria that's in it and uh, it can store, so. Forever boiling. This is uh That might be the limit. That, yeah, I wouldn't put any more than that in. Check that out, guys. That is the fastest we've ever got it up to that temperature. We're just about ready for it to start boiling. It's probably been about 20 minutes real time and we've gotten a whole bunch of sap up to temp or close to temp. It's look, it's already steaming. That's, that's, oh man, that's, that's exciting. That <laughs> it's, it's worth, it's worth the effort. If, if you can get that much sap up to that temperature that quickly, I am, I am impressed. The only thing that I do notice is that the door is somewhat, uh, somewhat difficult to open. It's, uh, it is getting a little hot, but we're not using that much wood which is a plus. We'll probably have to shave the door down a little bit in the future in order to do that thing, but it'll work for this. There's a learning curve on everything, right? So it is, has, has expanded a little bit. No big deal. We're boiling. We don't even, maybe we don't even need the door there. Just full rip roar. Get in my belly. Maple syrup. We'll shave this down a little bit later. Or maybe it'll just work out. Just a little bit more air. The hinges are a little stiff too. Version one's pretty, I'm satisfied so far with version one. Well, that's pretty cool. We're in it for a half an hour worth of burn time and we've got the entire thing boiling. It's a rolling boil. This is gonna take like a fraction of the time we took us the last couple of years. The longer it boils, the sweeter it smells. It doesn't smell very sweet. It's getting there. A sauna. It's, it's coming, steam sauna. Look at that, we should just put this in the sauna. We should have just double. Exciting. This is exciting. Are you excited for this thing? Come on. Be excited for this thing. Look at this thing. Look how well this is working. Well, it just makes me think back of all of the time <laughs> I spent in the last few years boiling sap. Although, you know, it's a nice time to be out. So putting logs on fire. Is that a smile? Is sitting, that a smile? Are you excited for this thing? Sun. You can't get him excited for anything. Look how much steam's coming off that thing. Look at this. There's not even any smoke coming out of the chimney. It's such an efficient burn. What were we doing in these last four years? Like how much time I could have saved? Oh man, like this, it's still a couple of hours away from maple syrup, at least a couple of hours. So uh, you guys are gonna have to join me next time where we get more progress on the log cabin and hopefully we get to eat some delicious maple syrup, maybe on some pancakes.